Come, Holy Spirit of God, and make my words your word to us this day, so that all that we hear and receive is of you, and all to the glory of God, whom we have come to know and call, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Is your God too small, too great, too big, or just right? No, I'm not trying to adapt the Goldilocks story into my story for today. For many years, my God was too small. I preached and taught that all of your sins are forgiven for the asking, but didn't believe that some of mine were. I thought wrongly so that some of my deep, most secret sins were unforgivable. To me, God would and could forgive those very same sins in you, but not in me. Do you see what I was doing? I now know and understand that I was making my sins greater than God. Mine was a kind of subtle but very real idolatry. For me, God was too small. The good news is that I no longer believe this for myself. God's forgiveness of my sins and yours is not dependent upon what we deserve nor upon what we have earned. God's forgiveness is unconditional, given before we even know to ask, without condition or qualification. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says to the likes of us who sin. All of us. Come unto me, all you who travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his Son unto the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If anyone sins, we have an advocate of the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Do those words sound familiar? They're the comfortable words in one of our liturgies. Indeed, they are comfortable, meant to assure us and to give us confidence in God's loving work and saving work. I also love the passage from Isaiah 1.18, which has been a great imperative comfort for me for many years. Come now, let us sit down and reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Now usually when I prepare a sermon, all that I've said up to this point is the end of the sermon rather than the beginning. But today I decided to give you the ending first. And no, I'm not through. I want to say a bit of our Old Testament reading from 2 Kings and then from the Gospel of John. And then having done this, I want to tie these two lessons into this sermon's beginnings. The lesson from 2 Kings involves the feeding of 100 pe people from the first fruit offerings to God. The offerings include 20 loaves of barley, bread, and fresh grain. Elisha, a man of God, directs that this offering be used to feed 100 people who are present. Elisha's servant protests, how can I set this before 100 people? 
The implication is they're not nearly enough. The implication is that this, this is God's offering. It cannot be used by us for us. The implication it would be better to give food to none rather than this special God food, God offering to so many people. So Elisha repeats his directive. Give it to the people and let them eat. Thus says the Lord. They shall eat and have some left. And so it was. In our gospel text for today, it's near the time of Passover. There may have been 100,000 plus more people visiting Jerusalem to celebrate this queen of feast. Imagine the chaos and the problems that would happen or t- would, t- would take place if suddenly 100,000 people from elsewhere came into your community to live for a week or so. News about Jesus had spread like wildfire. Large crowds of people came seeking him out for blessing, for healing, to hear the words that he taught. Up in the mountains, Jesus sits down and teaches. The mountain trek does not defer the people, masses of people, to come to him. Jesus asks Philip a question, already knowing the answer. Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? The multitudes are in the mountains, not in the city. And even if they were in the city, wages of a half a year, wages of six months would not be enough to buy bread so that everyone could eat even a small portion. Simon Peter's brother, Andrew, tells Jesus there's a small, small boy there with five loaves Uh, barley loaves and two fish. Nothing at all to feed a crowd of 5,000 and more. After the people sit down, Jesus takes the loaves and the fish. He gives thanks. Then has his disciples distribute what has been blessed to the people. We're told in the gospel that all ate and all were satisfied with an abundance left over. When God acts, God always acts abundantly. When God works, God works in abundant ways. That is a truth in our lesson today from 2 Kings. It is a truth today in our gospel from John's gospel. God is not too small to do anything. Not too small to stoop down and feed more than 100 people from an offering of first fruits of bread and grain. Not too small to feed 5,000 people from the dinner sack, from the sack lunch of a small boy. When God works, there is abundance in that work with an abundance left over. So I ask the question that I asked at the very beginning of this sermon time. Is your God too small, too great, or just right? What is your great need today? Do you dare present your need to God as you say your prayers and make your confession? Is your need so great that you cannot speak, dare speak of it to God? Perhaps your God is too small. On the other hand, is your need so small that it's not worthy of speaking to that, to God about that need? Then perhaps your God is too big. Remember this, nothing is too high or too low for our God. God will always stoop down to lift us up. Dare to reach out, if you will, and touch the hem of his robe. 
draw near to your God and to mine and to ours. Let him touch your ears, your mouth, your eyes, your heart, your body, your soul. I'm reminded of a text, of the text from an old war horse choir anthem. It's based upon Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Return to the Lord, and he will have mercy and abundantly pardon. Great wickedness and unrighteousness on our part is in thinking that God cannot or will not act on our behalf. God is near today. Come near. God is here today. Draw near. God already knows your need even before you ask. Ask. Trusting that even though your need is great or small, that God will always hear and respond in abundant ways. And in ways just exactly right for you. Amen.